Welcome to the Irresistible You podcast. This is the place to get a dose of empowerment to create the life you crave and deserve. My name is Amy with two E's and I'm the CEO and founder of Irresistible University. Through my podcast and courses, I teach women just like you how to ditch the body image issues, gain confidence, and lose the emotional weight to look and feel irresistible at any size. Welcome back to the podcast. In today's episode, I am going to be diving into the concept or the idea that your body is your forever home. (laughs) Just stay with me here. Because so many of us treat our bodies like it's this temporary place. It's like a rental property. I'm only going to be here for a little bit. And when I say that, I'm talking specifically about being in this size body right now, right? So being this size, you have this mentality of I'm losing weight. This is just temporary. I'm not going to be in this size forever. And so your body in your mind have this huge disconnect where you don't feel like you are part of your body. I hope this is making sense. Just please stay with me because I think this is going to really resonate with you. And we spend all this time waiting to lose weight or waiting to fit into the dream outfit, waiting to have the perfect dream body, right? And so while we're waiting, and if you're always in this waiting mode of telling yourself, One day, one day, one day, you know, you never feel settled. You never feel settled and feel like, you know what? I am home. This feels like home. So think about like if you've ever like renting versus buying, okay? When you rent somewhere and you think this is just temporary. I'm just going to be renting here for a year or two till I get back on my feet or till I can afford to put a down payment on a house or till we decide where we want to live. And it just feels temporary. It doesn't feel like you've settled into home. And the house itself or the apartment itself, there's certain things you can't do because you're not allowed to leave permanent damage for lack of a better word, right? You're not allowed to change certain things in the home based on your rental agreement, right? Sometimes you're not even allowed to paint or you're not allowed to hang things on the walls or install certain gadgets and what have you, where when you own your home, there is no one telling you what you can or can't do inside of your home, right? And so it always feels like it's this temporary space. I'm not here forever. There's not, I can't make a lot of changes. So I'm going to just like come and go, but I don't ever really feel like I've, I've arrived or I've come home. And we can share that same feeling as ourselves living in our bodies where our body doesn't feel like we we own it. It doesn't feel like we belong in it. It just feels like it's this temporary place where I could just lose a little bit of weight. If I could just get a little bit smaller, if I could just fit into those clothes, then and only then will I feel comfortable and at home in your body, in my body. So if you have spent years obsessing over the scale, putting your life on hold, this is going to be the episode that's the wake up call that you're going to need to change everything, to start the process, to make your body and your life feel like it's where you're supposed to be. It's where you're supposed to be. So first things first, I'm going to get into this temporary versus permanent mindset. I know we kind of, we kind of touched on that a little bit, but when you're living in a body that you don't recognize, whether it's because you've gained all of this weight, or whether it's because you've had kids and now you don't recognize, you don't recognize yourself, you don't recognize this new body, or whether it's from aging and things are starting to move and shift and you don't recognize yourself. When you live in a body that you dislike and that you quite frankly hate, it feels temporary, it feels restless, it feels like, you know, um, It just, you have this huge disconnect and you're disconnected from yourself and you're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for this weight loss or this change in your body size to make your body feel like home. 
Okay. So that's, that's the two things that are kind of like fighting, right? Is this temporary versus permanent mindset. We rationally know our bodies are permanent. This is the body we were born in. This is the body that we have. Yes, there are things we can do to change it. And that's fine. That's, that's perfectly fine. But what I'm telling you and what I'm asking of you is to stop putting your life on hold until it's perfect. Think about it this way. When you do buy a house, right? And you see this house and it's a fixer upper, right? You see this house, you're like, oh, it's just, it, it's not the best looking. Um, you know, it, it needs a lot of renovations. It needs some updating. It needs new paint. It needs new appliances. Maybe it even needs a new roof or new floors, but you see the potential, right? You see the potential in this fixer upper. So you go for it and you settle in and you buy this house and you pour all of your energy and money and love and time into making this house your home. But while you're doing that, you're still at home, right? But you're still working on the house. You're still doing things to the house, even though this is where you come home to every day. This is where you live. This is where your children are growing up, right? This is where you're making memories. And you you can do the same thing in your own body. You can do it, you can do it either way. You can either do it to where, you know, you're constantly renovating, constantly trying to fix things, but you don't feel at home doing that. You feel like you're living in the spare bedroom or the shed in the backyard, or you're renting somewhere until the house is done. Or you can settle in and say, the home isn't where I want it to be. It's still got some work to do, but I'm still going to, I'm still going to live here like it's my forever home. I'm going to decorate. I'm going to make memories. I'm going to put the Christmas tree up. I'm going to do all the things, right? And I would say even the house that um, that we're in right now, when we bought it, I mean, the house has, it's, it's a great house, but it has certain things that I would never have designed the house that way, but they're cosmetic. They're cosmetic. They are, um, minor cosmetic things. Like when we got this house, our entire kitchen (laughs) and the kitchen, like the kitchen and family room, like combo thing, right. Was green. And I mean like the ugliest, most disgusting, pukey shade of green you can think of. And in the kitchen, it also had this disgusting greenish brown, like wallpaper border, They left the ugly curtains in there. Like it was a hot mess, but that's cosmetic. Like within a weekend, my husband redid everything. I was super duper pregnant at the time. So I was just, you know, kind of like an assistant, Um, but he did it all. Like he painted everything. He took the wallpaper down. I mean, and it looks completely different. Uh, We redid the fireplace those are cosmetic changes, right? We can, we can do those. It's things on the outside that is very easy to fix. Very simple. We can get that done. Um, you know, if you think about the internal, the, the non-cosmetic structural changes, if the house has a good structure, the rest of it is easy to fix, right? If you don't have a good structure and a foundation in your home, There's no point in working on the outside stuff. Think about that with yourself. You're so focused on gotta lose weight, gotta lose weight, gotta lose weight, gotta look this way, gotta look that way, gotta, you know, have this body shape or whatever. And meanwhile, you have no foundation. You have no structure. You have no boundaries. You have no like rock solid foundation. And what does that mean? What that means is you don't, you haven't worked on the emotional weight. You haven't worked on the ability to have boundaries with yourself and with other people. You haven't worked on, you know, um, past traumas and things that you're dealing with that you are like, that you're continuing to repeat in other areas of your life, or you're still using food as a coping mechanism to deal with certain things in your life because you don't have that solid foundation. So think of that as your emotional weight. If you don't lose the emotional weight, 
the cosmetic changes will never make a difference. Meaning the weight loss, the extensions, the lashes, the brows, all of that outside stuff, right? If you have a home that has a horrible foundation, the floors are caving in, you know, the pipes are busted, whatever, it's sliding off the foundation. You could paint that house. You could steal appliance. You could stainless steel appliance the shit out of that house. You could modernize that house. You could put smart appliances, smart plugs. You could just do all the things and none of it in the long run is going to matter if the house is falling apart on the inside. And I need you to think about that for your own life. If you are constantly falling apart on the inside and don't have a strong sense of self, all of this weight loss is just cosmetic. It's just cosmetic and it's just temporary because the next time, so think about this, when I go back to the house analogy, if your house is sliding off the foundation, all that work that you just did on the yard and updating the paint on the outside of the house and what have you, the house just slid off the foundation. <laughs> like it, it, it now has to all be repaired, right? If you lose the weight, but you've done nothing internally to repair your relationship with yourself to lose the emotional weight that you're dragging around the next time you're faced with a challenge in our analogy let's think about the next challenge being it knocked you off your foundation the next stressor in life all of that work that you did was for nothing because you didn't build back who you really are you didn't build back your sense of self you didn't build that foundation so we have to work from the inside out. And that's one of the things I'm always stressing here is that if you don't lose your emotional weight, trying to go on every desperate diet, trying to hustle your way down the scale, it's never going to work. It might work temporarily, right? We can temporarily paint the house. We can temporarily lose the weight. But you need to be the type of person who has dealt with their emotional shit so that no one is rocking you off your foundation. Now, you might like shake up a little bit, but you're not rocking off that foundation because you have built it up and you know what you need. And so we have to come to this idea and this concept that we need to make our bodies our forever home because where else are you living? <laughs> like you don't get another one. You don't have one waiting for you at the Walmart pickup, right? This is your forever home. This is your forever body. Yes, you can make changes, but you got to take care of it. You have to take care of it because you're not getting another one. So changing into this mindset of what does it mean to make your body a forever home, right? So it means we can't wait for the wait, right? We already live here. We've already been living here for a lot of, for some of us, a lot of years, okay? We've already been here. And so we're no longer waiting to move in. We're not waiting to settle down. Like we're already here. So we've got to make the best of what we have. And if we don't like what we have, then what's the plan to make some changes? And certain things we just can't change. Like there's just certain things. But when it comes to your weight, obviously you can make changes. You can lose the weight. But you have to also work on the inside the emotional weight. Okay. And so your body might be like a house that needs those renovations. Like it may not be where you want it to be, but you still got to live here. You got to care for it. You've got to take care of it. You've got to continuously work on it. You can't live in any house. I don't care if you buy a new build or you're one of these like bougie people that's custom built their house and blah, blah, blah. You cannot do that and then not take care of the home. In five plus years, that house is going to be trashed. If you're not constantly doing maintenance to the home, it's the same thing with your body. If you are not maintaining, and I'm not just talking working out, exercise, and the physical stuff. I'm talking about the mental health. If you are not, you know, doing the things that feed your soul, that make you feel healthy mentally and emotionally, your house is going to be wrecked. It's going to be trashed. And then you've got a lot to clean up. So thinking about, um, you know, how do we renovate ourselves without hating ourselves? Because a lot of you think I'm not allowed to like this house. I'm not allowed to 
love this house unless it's perfect, right? How many of us have felt that way about our like our actual homes, right? I don't love it here yet. It's not where I want it to be. You know, um, I'm just kind of going through the motions, waking up here, getting ready for work and going about my business, but I don't, I don't love it. And so we have to think about how we can focus on being comfortable where we are right now while also doing the work, right? And that's what it's all about because once you can feel at peace, at ease, and you don't feel like you're a prisoner or an enemy sitting in your own body, you can start to do the work and the work will be long lasting and you won't have to keep going back to desperate dieting constantly over and over again. So there's ways to renovate without hating yourself. And a lot of people think, well, that means I'm just going to accept my situation. It means I'm giving up. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that at all. And I steer people away from the word accept. And I ask you to use the word acknowledge. I don't have to accept the current weight that I am. I have to acknowledge it. I can't be in denial and la la land about it. I have to acknowledge this is where you are. It may not be where you want to be. You're further, you're, you are closer to where you want to be than you were before. But this still isn't where I want to be. But I don't have to accept it and lay here and just take it and be like, well, that's it. I can't do anything about it. I accepted it. It's done. No. It's the same thing with the house. I'm going to keep using this analogy to make it easy to understand is that I didn't come in this house and go, well, this green paint it just is what it is. I just got to sit here and take it. It's like, no, I'm going to start working on things one room at a time. Like our hallway upstairs is still that disgusting shade of green. <laughs> like, And we've been here for four years and I walk by it multiple times a day and I roll my eyes and I'm like, oh my God, when are we going to get this done? I know we will. Um, it's just in the grand scheme of life with all the other things that pop up, all the pop-up events in our lives. I talk about that a lot. Changing the upstairs paint job, it's going to be a big undertaking. Um, and it just hasn't been a priority. It hasn't been a priority energetically. It hasn't been a priority time uh Time-wise, time wise, it has not been a priority financially. You know, other things have taken precedence over the green paint. Does it mean I hate my house? No. It means I'm still here. This is my home. I love it here. I just don't like the paint upstairs. <laughs> but we have done a lot of work in other rooms and getting things a certain way. And it takes time. Think about it that way. Like, you don't move into a house that's a fixer-upper and it's just done that it's just done in like six months, everything's done, it's finished, and it's ready to go. I would venture to say it's a lifelong, it's a lifelong um, project, right? Because even when we get the things updated and we renovate, going back to what I said earlier, a house requires maintenance. Every couple years, there are certain things that you are going to have to do to keep that house in order, to keep that house strong, right? And it's the same thing with ourselves. We are not a one renovation and done. We don't go through the renovation, aka the weight loss. We don't go through the weight loss and be like, okay, that was it. We're done. We reached the finish line. Moving on. That's the problem. And it's probably why you've gained back your weight so many times. Because you were conditioned to believe that it is a one and done. That it's this like finish line. If I just buckle down, I lose the weight, I get to my goal... I'll figure everything else out after that. And the reality of that is, is that's not, that's not, that's not real. That's not reality, right? The reality of it is it's an ongoing maintenance, right? We, we lose all of our weight. Well, guess what? Now you have to keep that weight off for the rest of your life. So that requires doing some of the same things that we were doing to get the weight off. And it's the same thing with the house, right? Like we don't paint the room one time in a lifetime and go, well, I'll probably never have to paint this house again. Chances are you're going to have to do that. Or if you replace the floors, the, especially carpet, you're going to need to replace that carpet eventually. Otherwise it's going to be really gross. 
<laughs> right? Like no judgment, but it's going to be gross. Um, so we can find ways to work on ourselves, to renovate ourselves while we're living here because we have to live here. We have no other choice. We have to be here. Right. And so really focusing on how you feel internally, focusing on the emotional weight, focusing on the personal development side of things, rather than waiting for this outside change to validate your existence. That does not validate your existence. You are worth more than the number on the scale. You are worth more than what you look like in the mirror. That is not your sense of validation. And you are not giving up. Acknowledging where you are doesn't mean you're giving up on making improvements. It doesn't mean, well, screw it. Like, I'm just going to lay down and take it. I'm a victim. Nothing I can do about it. And I'm just going to, like, you know, hang out here. No. What it means is, because everybody thinks if I treat myself good, if I like myself, if I love myself, I won't want to make changes. And I used to be that same person, right? It was like, I thought in order to lose weight, you have to be so disgusted and filled with hatred of your body for you to be motivated to lose the weight. Because if I wasn't disgusted by looking in the mirror, why would I want to change anything? That was my mindset. And that's so not how it goes. Because when you do things out of disgust, when you do things out of hatred, when you do things out of des- you do things out of desperation at that point, you do things that are not good to yourself. You treat yourself like shit. But when you come at it from, I really love it here. I'm talking about my body. I really love it here. I'm so grateful that I'm still here. I'm so grateful that I have this body. But there's some things I want to do to improve. I want to make some improvements. When you treat your body with love and kindness and respect, you're more likely to make these positive changes that last you a lifetime. So we we can't just hate ourselves down the scale because then when you lose the weight, then what? Then what's the complaint? Because you've spent your whole life hating yourself. That's all you know how to do. So now that you've lost the weight, Oh my God, the loose, saggy skin. Oh my God, the stretch marks. Oh my God, the cellulite's still there. Oh my God, look at me, I still look fat. Because you're just accustomed to hating yourself. So no matter how much weight you lose, you just don't see the progress. You don't see it. So accepting or acknowledging where you're at in your journey is not the same thing as giving up. The only way you're giving up is if you give up, right? That Like there's no other way to say it. If you're still working on it, you haven't given up. You haven't given up. And it goes back to this waiting for the weight. We have to stop waiting for the weight to wear things that look good now. Find things that make you feel good, that fit you, that make you look good now. I am going through it right now with this. I will share with you guys. So (laughs) I am just going through it because, you know, I'm down 70 pounds. I'm still not where I want to be. And sometimes I still don't see it. I know I just mentioned that. I don't see it every day when I look in the mirror, but then maybe I'll see a picture and I think that the picture has been altered. That is what our mind does to us. Our mind will literally make us think, oh, I must've had some kind of filter on when I took that picture. It's like, no bitch, that's what you look like. You, you lost the weight. You look good. But I am still adjusting and I still have, you know, a good 40, probably 40 pounds to lose at this point. And I am in an identity crisis, y'all. Like I am having the biggest identity crisis with clothes because I have lived in athleisure for the last four years. I, you know, especially most of the time having kids, right? Because I'm either working from home or I am running to school, or we're going to Target, or we're going to the museum, or we're going out for a walk. I want to be comfortable and able to move. And I love athleisure. I think athleisure is just really, really cute. And I'm down with that. But, you know, we went years where Frank and I had no help, like no one to watch the kids. We weren't having date nights. Um, And so 
in the last couple of weeks, we've actually had two date nights, <laughs> which has been nice. Um, and even in the past year, we've, we've had more than we've had in the last four years, actually. But then I'm like, oh my God, like, what do I wear? I, because the clothes are in my closet. I haven't really worn a lot of those clothes like in years. So they're not in style. I don't even like the style anymore. I don't know why I'm hanging on to certain things. I need to go through another closet purge. And then I just go to the store and I don't like the clothes. <laughs> like, I have enough trauma from being the fat girl in ninth and 10th grade. I don't want to go to the store as a 43 year old woman and see the same ugly ass nineties clothes. I, I, I just don't, I, I just don't, I don't want to wear a choker with sunflowers and Jinko jeans, like crop tops, girl, I wasn't wearing crop tops in the nineties. Okay. I have enough trauma from that. <laughs> like I do not understand what's happening. I'm like, is this what happens? You get old and you don't dress with like what's in style. So then people know that you're old. I'm like, I think that's what's happening here. Um, I just, I, I'm, I, I, I am five foot three, right under 200 pounds. I'm not wearing the big baggy jeans that are in style right now. That just does not look good. If I want to wear skinny jeans, I'm wearing skinny jeans. I don't give a shit what all y'all young people think. I don't care. Forever skinny jeans. Hello. And these clothes are just hideous. Like, I'm sorry, but this farm, like, little house on the prairie, farm dress, I just, I can't. I really can't. And so I was just having this moment, and I'm like, I don't know what to wear. I don't know what to wear anymore. I don't like what I have. A lot of the clothes that I have are too big, or they're out of style, and I just don't like that style anymore. And then I go to look at clothes that are out and about, and... No, no, I am not with it. So I'm kind of having that identity crisis um, because I want to wear cute things. And even my husband was telling me, he's like, you are so much smaller than you think you are. Like, because I haven't really been wearing things that are super like figure flattering or because I still feel a little bit uncomfortable. And this is like new territory for me. Um, it just feels different this time around because I've been this size before but my body composition was completely different. Now I've had two kids. I've had two C-sections. Things are in different places, okay? Um, so it just feels different. But I need to, to, I need to do the same thing that I'm about to share with you. And that is to stop waiting for the weight to wear the clothes you love. To find pieces that fit and flatter you now. Not, you know, 40 pounds from now. Because I would think 70 pounds ago, wouldn't I want this version of me to wear something a little bit cuter to wear something that makes her feel better? And it's like, think about the house. Think about the house. I'm going to keep using you know, these analogies. You buy a piece of furniture for your house, right? Let's use the furniture as like you. So you buy these cute outfits, but you don't want to wear them because you're like, I don't have anywhere to wear that to. Why would I wear that to Target? Why would I wear that to Walmart? Why would I wear that to the science museum? Whatever. You buy a nice couch, right? And the couch comes in a cover with plastic wrap. Are you going to keep that couch wrapped up in plastic wrap until a special occasion? No. So why are we doing that to ourselves, right? How you show up for something is how you show up for everything. So when you catch yourself saying, well, I'm just going to the store. Okay, so why are we not taking pride in ourselves? Why are we not, you know, making ourselves feel good? Why are we not making ourselves, in, I believe in like, look good, feel good, right? So, um, yeah, this part, you know, we, we need to start doing what we do. So what is the answer here? We need to get some inspiration. We need to find out, like go online, go on Pinterest, go on TikTok, go on Instagram, find people that have your same body size and see what they're wearing. Find things that you like and you have to be comfortable in it too, right? Like I have this thing with date night where it's like, <laughs> I don't want to be, okay, so a lot of the shirts that are out right now are up to here on your neck. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, no. So I'm in this like weird thing where it's like, I don't want to be that covered up because hello, when you have gigantic boobs and you wear the shirt that's up to your neck, your boobs just look like one big flipping 
uniboob and nobody wants to see that. I don't want to see that. It's not cute, right? So where's the scoop necks? Where's the V-necks? Where's the square necks even? Like, wh where are you at? Where are you at? <laughs> That's what looks best on me. So I'm in this place of like, when I go on date night, I don't want to be fully covered up. I also don't want to be like boobies falling out all over the place because I don't want people gawking at me, but I don't want to not get any attention, but I want to get a little bit of attention. Guys, I just, it, it's, it's just, it's crazy, right? It's crazy. So getting out of your own way of feeling uncomfortable, like a lot of times we don't want to get dressed up or we don't want to wear certain things because we don't want the attention. And you have to ask yourself, why don't I want the attention? What kind of attention do I think this is going to get, right? Um, and we're not talking about wearing, you know, a, a clubbing, a clubbing dress out to Walmart and everybody's gawking and looking because that just looks weird, right? But just wearing, you know, I, I really want to wear, I love, okay, so I hated bodysuits back in the, I remember seventh grade, I had a bodysuit. I used to wear it with these bell bottoms when the seventies were cool in the nineties, right? And everybody wanted to be like the hippie style. And when they came back around, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. But the more I see it, I'm like, you know what? It looks so nice, like put together with the high-waisted jeans and like a pair of heels or cute shoes and the jewelry and all that. And then I get self-conscious. I'm like, no, because then you're going to see the fat rolls. And it's like, yeah, but you actually look better with everything like pulled in and tight than wearing things that are like oversized. You know what I mean? So I am also on this journey right now of figuring out who my new like identity is with clothes and my new fashion and style because it's changed, right? Like it changes as we get older and I need to figure out what that looks like. And I don't want to wait for the wait because I want to feel good now. And when we feel good, we do good and we make better choices and all of that. So, you know, don't wait for the wait, figure out what your signature style is and let's get to work on it where I felt like I had one before. And now I just, I got to rework that. I got to rethink that. <laughs> so the lesson here is we got to stop waiting to feel at home in our own life. You are home. You've been here since the day you were born. So it's time you start treating it like a forever home and taking care of it just as you would a forever home. And settling into your body is part of feeling at home in your life. If you don't feel, if you feel like a stranger or a prisoner in your own body, how are you ever going to feel at home in your own skin? Right? It's not just about the weight. It's about being at ease being at peace, being comfortable in your own skin. Because even though that might appear to be external cosmetic things, it's not. Because it translates back to the internal stuff, right? And when we work on the internal stuff first, the rest of it becomes a lot easier, right? Um, you know, I tried some clothes on over the weekend. I said, let me just try. Like, if this is the style that's out, I'll give it a chance. Girl, no. I just, I didn't get upset or frustrated at myself where I know I've spent a lot of years crying in the dressing room, beating myself up in the dressing room, saying some disgusting things to myself. And this was just more like, this just isn't your vibe. This is not your vibe. You knew it wasn't, but you tried it. And also like the body dysmorphia of thinking you're still a certain size. Like I picked up this one outfit. I thought it was kind of cute. It was like a skirt and a, t um, a top. And I thought, wow, I could dress this up or I could dress this down either way. And I picked an extra large. And when I tried it on, it just looked horrible because it was so big. And I was like, there's no way an extra large is this big on me. It must be a fluke. It must just be, um, it, it's just the cut. This is a, just a different cut. Why can't we just accept that's the reality, right? So, you know, um, you've got to try things. You've got to try things. So I'm going to do that too. I'm going to start trying some different looks, ordering some clothes, seeing what I like, seeing what I don't like. You know, it's the beauty of Amazon, right? If we don't like it, we can send it back. So I'm going to do that because I've got to find my sense of style again. And some of these clothes that I was hanging, and I've purged a lot of clothes in the last like four or five years. 
but these clothes that I still have in my closet, even when they can fit, I don't see myself wearing those again. <laughs> like, I just don't see it. A lot of them. Like, I don't know where I'd wear these two. They're out of style. They're not cute. They're old. like, let's get a fresh start. So, um, again, we have to stop waiting to feel at home in our life and stop waiting to feel at home in our body and realize we're here. What can I do today to acknowledge that this is where I live, settle into that, but then also say there's a couple renovations I want to do and not hate myself in the process. That's what this journey is all about. It is learning to just be at home with yourself. And once you can do that, it feels really good and it'll be a process. It'll come and go because then you'll have the next body change, right? And it's like you almost have to, I don't want to say start the process over, but kind of remind yourself, this is another change. This is okay. And do what you got to do to get through that change because our bodies are going to continue changing the rest of our lives between aging, body composition, weight, all of that stuff. So that is all I have for this episode. Um, I hope it made sense. I hope you got a couple of nuggets out of it. If you love the podcast or any episode on the podcast has helped you, please leave a rating and review on your podcast player of choice. That really helps me know what is working. It helps other women find the podcast. And I have some exciting news coming. My signature course, Irresistible You. I am relaunching the course. Okay. And I'm going to be relaunching it as a self-study where before we were doing like a full blown coaching program with weekly coaching sessions and all of that. I am relaunching this as a self-study and I will have more information coming, but I want to make sure that you are on my email list because that is how you are going to find out when it goes on sale. You'll be have access to uh, coupon codes and all that good stuff. Plus I send emails out when there's new episodes and um, it's just another way to stay in touch because we never know with social media what's going to happen with that. We know email is, is here to stay. So make sure that you sign up to my email list. There is a link down in the show notes. And when you sign up, you will get a free action plan from me. And if you've already signed up before, um, you should be good to go. Um, but if you want to go ahead and do that, please do. It's in the show notes. And if you are wondering, if, you, if you're new to the podcast, please make sure that you subscribe, hit your notification buttons, and I recommend using Amazon Music for your podcast player of choice. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you have access to Amazon Music for free. If you're not a Prime member, I invite you to join through my free trial, which is in the show notes um, of this episode. So I am going to go ahead and end the episode here. I will catch you guys in the next one. Until then, stay irresistible. Bye, guys.